Hey friends! My name is Desiree aka Mama Friendly and I do all sorts of videos on my channel from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of this sounds like fun to you, I hope that you will subscribe and join me on my YouTube adventure. And speaking of a Disney twist, I'm putting a Disney twist on this month's cookbook collab. This is a collab hosted every month for the last couple years now by my friend Tamara at Southern Wife Everyday Life. And the idea behind this collab is to use recipes out of our cookbooks so that we can kind of inspire our viewers to use their own cookbooks or go to your local library and pick up a cookbook because there are so many gems inside these cookbooks. They're just sitting on these shelves collecting dust when they could be feeding your family instead. <laughs> because it's a collab, I'm gonna have a link in the description box for Tamara's channel and another link for the playlist so that once you've watched my video, you could see what all my friends made this month as well. I did say I was putting a Disney twist on today's recipe and that means, of course, that I am using my unofficial Disney Parks cookbook. I've used this book in this series so many times. I've made so many recipes out of it just for funsies even, not even just for the channel. If you are a Disney Parks fan, you need this book. Like, I don't know why you don't have it already. So I'm gonna have it linked below as well in case uh, you're interested. But it brings recipes from all of the California parks and all of the Orlando parks. It's broken up into theme park actually. So here's a little like sneak peek at the contents. There's a lot of fantastic recipes in here. I don't follow the recipes to the letter, but that's because I make these recipes with an allergy friendly twist mainly because I eat gluten and dairy free. And so I'm not gonna make the recipes just as they are in the book, cause then I can't eat them. So I'm probably making like the easiest recipe in the entire book today, but I wanted to do it all the same because I wanted to show you what swaps I make to make it dairy free, gluten free, soy free and vegan. So the recipe that I'm gonna show you how to make today is the gray stuff from Beauty and the Beast. So you can actually eat at the Beast's castle at the Magic Kingdom. And one of the desserts that they have there is the gray stuff, which is featured of course in Be Our Guest in the movie, Be Our Guest being the name of the restaurant as well. And they don't quite describe in the movie what the gray stuff is. It was assumed to be like a pate of sorts. But when you go to the restaurant Be Our Guest at Magic Kingdom, they serve you it's like a really fluffy cookies and cream pudding mousse type situation. Really, really tasty. They even have cupcakes that they top with it. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to bake today. And it's, again, super simple ingredients, super easy to put together, really, really delicious. So it's like a low effort, high payoff recipe. And what more could you ask for, right? So if all that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. Let me show you how I made my allergy-friendly gray stuff. All right, friends, this is probably the easiest recipe I've ever shared on this channel. And uh, mostly because it's taking kind of components rather than ingredients and mashing them all together. So you're gonna need 12 Oreos or their equivalent. I'm using the gluten-free Oreos. You need one 3.4 ounce box package, what have you, of instant vanilla pudding. I found this vegan vanilla pudding that I've used in other recipes and it is delicious. The only place I've found it is Amazon, so I'm gonna be linking it in the description box. But again, you can use any vanilla pudding that you like. We need one and a half cups of whole milk, but I'm gonna be using my tried and true Nut Pods Original. This is the only thing I ever use for cooking, baking, etc. And we need one eight ounce tub of frozen whipped topping, thawed. So this one is coconut based. I was able to find this one at Sprouts. I know they have it at Whole Foods. I think you could even find this at Publix. Like this should not be too hard to find. And again, you could use regular Cool Whip if you're not worried about dairy-free. Any whip topping will work. So the instructions in the cookbook say to use a blender or food processor to crush your chocolate sandwich cookies into a fine crumble and set aside. But 
even though I have a food processor, I know a lot of people don't. So in order to try to make this accessible to everyone, I'm just going to put my cookies into a Ziploc and I'm going to use a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a can maybe. Like I'm sure the big cans, the 28 ounce diced tomato cans would work great. Or you could use the back of a pan or a heavy saucepan. Drop an elbow on them, whatever, but just get your cookies as fine as you can get them, set them aside. And then in a large bowl, we're going to mix our instant pudding powder and our milk. Whisk it together and let it chill in the fridge for about 10 minutes just so that it starts to set. And then we're going to bring it back out, stir in our cookie crumbs and our whipped topping with a spoon and just be careful not to over mix. I actually left some of the cookie bits out so that I could use them as the garnish on top afterwards. This makes eight servings and again, probably easiest recipe ever, right? But now you have the gray stuff, just like Belle got to have when she was visiting with all of her furniture friends. Okay friends, there you have it. There is my super simple but really delicious allergy friendly way to have a little bit of Beauty and the Beast in your own house with some of the gray stuff. This is a very kid friendly dessert. My husband who eats all the standard American diet type things, he eats dairy, he eats gluten, um, he did not notice any difference as far as the flavors or textures of anything. He enjoyed this dessert very much. So it's actually something that you can make for the whole family, even people that don't have allergies or dietary restrictions, and everybody will like it. Make sure you check out the description box for links to the specialty sort of ingredients like the vegan pudding, for example, if that's something that you're interested in using. Um, otherwise, if you are not worried about gluten, you can use regular Oreos or some equivalent. If you're not worried about dairy, you could use regular like Jello pudding mix, you could use regular milk, you could use regular Cool Whip. So pick and choose what makes sense to you and enjoy. While you're in the description box, make sure you check out that playlist so you can see what all my friends made. And I really hope that you enjoyed this Disney Park recipe. I've been doing one every month this year. I don't have any plans for stopping anytime soon. So if there's a particular recipe from the parks, whether it's Disneyland, Disney World, or even beyond, that you'd like to see me try to adapt, let me know in the comments. I want to thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope that you will please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. See you real soon.